G'day guys, welcome to another episode of uh, the COVID Conversations. This is episode five and we are absolutely thrilled to get to episode five and even more excited to be uh, with a special guest from Melbourne, Australia and that is Roz Rhymes. Welcome to the show Roz, how are you? Very well, thanks Griggsy, great to be here. Now, just a little bit of a, a bio about Roz. Roz is um, arguably the most famous MAP student um, out of Melbourne. If you've done the Melbourne MAP program and you don't know who Roz is, then something has really gone wrong. She is the truth is you haven't done it. <laughs> 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 yes, she's a fan, she's a really a fantastic uh, uh, personality and uh, definitely a, a great person to get around and welcome new uh, MAP students each year. And um, I remember Roz coming to our first session and um, the impact that she had on the group was was incredible. So um, Roz has a um, obviously a background in positive psychology. She graduated from Melbourne in 2016. And she now uh, runs a social enterprise, uh, which is called Living with Zest. Um, Roz, do you want to tell us about um, about that enterprise and maybe correct anything that I've got wrong there? Sure. Thanks, Chrissy. You got everything, almost everything right. It's just live with zest rather than living with zest, but very similar. So well done. So it's very interesting. I came from a wine background. I was lucky enough to work for Moet and Chandon in France. And I used to lecture in wine studies in higher ed, had a complete career change. But what I learned from wine was all about savouring. So if you look at the appearance, the aroma, the flavour, you get so much more out of the wine. And then when I learned about positive psychology, I actually learned that a guy called Bryant, he'd written a book about savouring with Veroff and that it's a thing, it's a practice. And it's different from mindfulness because it's still being realistic but zeroing in on what work is working well and it's really amplifying your positive emotions and i'll give you an example so i tend to wear rm williams a kit i've got an akuba on right now um and sometimes you know i might think or notice my boots are scratched i know that won't make me happy so what i choose to do is to zero in on my beautiful dog. So I work with two Labradoodles, my dogs. This is Rafa, named after the uh, famous tennis player. So he's fit, focused and fabulous. And we, I've turned him from a therapy dog to a well-being dog. So he's, he's a zestful therapy dog. So I supposedly, or I've done my via character strengths and I'm, my top strength is humour and right up there is zest. So that's being full of energy and enthusiasm. And we know that if we can live with zest, we can live fully and uh, we can really enjoy life. And so Ros, just, just, to, just to jump in on that, um, sure. because I'm sure nobody who, who knows you would be surprised by those character strengths. But just for those who maybe don't know much about character strengths, how would one go about actually finding out about their own character strengths because it's quite an easy process isn't it it is very easy and it's a good question thanks for asking okay so i'd go online and have a look at via via values in action character strengths or character strengths survey it's an easy survey to take it's free about five million or more have taken the survey now it takes about 15 minutes and it comes up with your top strengths so it's really I think energizing and empowering to learn your top strengths and to try and use them more and more. My top strength actually is humor. And I find that if I can help people to laugh, it really lights me up. It makes me very happy. So I would encourage you all to have a look at your top strengths. Something in common there with your great self, Grigsy, the humor. Well, humour to, I feel like humour is a strength within me because I find a lot of my own jokes very funny, but I'm not sure that other people would necessarily agree um, that I'm a funny person. <laughs> but I think that's the beauty of the character strengths um, is that it is comparing within person 
So um, it's not about saying, oh, well, I'm the funniest person out of 100 people. It's about within you comparing which of those strengths is greatest. So I think that's a really uh, positive thing because a lot of um, a lot of people are used to comparing outwardly and social comparison is or can be a, I guess, a negative um, impact with regards to well-being. Um, not sure if I've explained that uh, really well, but um, that's one of the one of the areas that you actually want to minimise. So, um, Kesh, I was just going to say um, another one of the people that we've already talked to, Nikki, has just started a really interesting initiative around character strengths that we'll share out with this video, um, and she's just getting people in this moment in time to think about the strengths that they're seeing and where they've seen it. And we're getting a little bit of a chronicle of how people are using their strengths um, to tackle COVID in different ways. So yeah, this, this area around strengths is really interesting. Um, it speaks to even what we're doing with this. My top strengths were kindness and a love of learning. And we've turned that into this podcast. So any ways that you can harness your personal strengths is gonna help you um, manage this situation in a better way yeah 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 i think um something i don't know about you guys but something i find when talking to um friends or family or people off the street is um trying to explain um positive psychology and bringing it back to sort of the basic one basic level is um you know that strength focused um rather than uh, the problems or um, the negative focus that you might get in in sort of traditional psychology so um, I think it's something that people, I find people can relate to. And then the other good thing is there's lots of tools like VIA and um, Strengths Finder and whatever else available for people to get straight into it and, and dig a bit deeper. And everyone likes finding out a bit about themselves and um, learning along the way. And then you can apply it in your own lives. So, Roz, what does that, that connection with, um, with the strengths, how does that uh, go with the, the, the dogs that, that you work with? How do you see that connection? Great, thanks for asking. Okay, so originally these, I've got two Labradoodles, one's getting a bit restless, his name's Rafa and the other one's called Flash. And we've been working in mental health and education for almost nine years. Um, we found, particularly going into the Royal Melbourne Hospital, it was often the paramedics, the surgeons, the specialists who would stop us and ask, can I pat your dog? And I started to get really curious using my strength of curiosity and wonder, now these people don't really need therapy, but they know they're getting a rapid well-being boost. And that was about the time I was studying positive psychology. And I thought, wow, what about dogs as psychological assets? And there's actually a psychologist in Queensland, Jordan Shan, who did a PhD on dogs as psychological assets. So high functioning people earning a six figure salaries often partnered with kids and the dogs being family members being part of an important part of their lives because they're non-judgmental and using some of Martin Seligman's terminology exercising some of the most beautiful human qualities that we have for example um, loyalty authenticity and so that's why I created well-being dogs and we use canine assisted education so we have learning outcomes and we're all we're not only soothing but bringing so bringing people back to zero but we're encouraging people to flourish to function at an optimum level so it's really exciting and I, I was lucky enough I, I developed a, a walk talk coaching savoring model or a walk talk saver coaching model which we launched at the International Post Psych Association World Congress last, last year. And the thinking behind that and the research behind that is we're walking in nature, we're talking, so things are bubbling up and people feel good because they're in nature, they're with the dog, it's a positive focus and we're savouring. And the early research for that suggests that, pardon the pun, that it's got legs and I'm really really excited and just in terms of using strengths I was explaining to Kesh yesterday after I'd done Pilates I go and get my coffee and there are two booths of people from Paramedics Victoria 
And I thought, will I, won't I, will I, won't I? And I thought, yes, I will. So I turned around with my takeaway coffee and I said, excuse me, I know these are challenging times with the coronavirus. I know that you have peer support dogs. I've actually got well-being dogs and I might be able to assist you. And I would love to do that, to be of service, free of charge, to give them some of the insights and the learnings that we know from savoring. And the guy looked at me and he said, I will give this card to the head of wellbeing. So it may or may not work, but I'm really glad that I was able to dig deep into my courage because it's not an easy thing to do. I didn't have my cobra on. I didn't have makeup on. It was post Pilates. <laughs> but, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to try. I was going to say, Ros, that's that, that that says a lot about you. Um, so thank you for for providing that, um, I guess, option. I'd be interested to see if it does get taken up. But something that really stood out to me in what you just said was the idea of connecting different elements of um, research supporting um, well-being interventions and putting them together in one. So the idea yeah. of the nature, the movement and exercise and then what you've been looking at with the dogs. Um, and that to me is just makes sense to put those things together. Yes. But unfortunately, I found a lot in our studies, a lot of, because of the nature of science requiring, um, I guess the um, isolating variables to, to try and determine some sort of causality, um, often you lose that because you're trying yes. to just modify or, or change one variable. and yes. So, look, I don't know where I'm going with this, but I feel like that's that you're onto something there with combining um, research elements together. Um, yeah. But do, do you find that's difficult to, I guess, like uh, validate? So to get evidence yeah. on. You, 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 you're right, Gritty, and and it was interesting. So I did my capstone on this canine assisted education and savouring, and for anyone doing the map or doing study. Originally, the savouring piece was, was kind of a hunch. I knew that it worked in wine. I wasn't entirely sure that it work, would work with the canine assisted education. But savouring as a practice keeps coming up across the world, whether it is Professor Lee Waters, who's on the project incidentally tonight at um, 7 o'clock on Channel 10, that's the 18th of March, um, whether it's Professor Cooper Ryder, David Cooper Ryder, who's an appreciative inquiry specialist, whether it's Alona Bodywell in the UK, savouring as a practice, as an effective way to improve wellbeing keeps coming up. And you're right, my model in an ideal world would be validated with gold standard um, randomised control testing. But as we know, that takes a lot of resourcing and a lot of money and a long time. I'm actually working, I'm in a research group with Tom Brunzel at Berry Street and we're looking at best practice canine assisted education and that's without the coaching component. Separate to that, I was at the University of Sydney coaching conference recently and, and they were pretty much the academics were saying you're on to something. I also know from a cultural point of view in Australia, we have a very kind of, can I say, macho culture. I don't think that's a surprise to anyone. Um, I am not a psychologist and I don't pretend to be, however, I am a coach and my belief and some of the research bears this out is many men would be much more comfortable in a natural setting walking with a coach with a positive focus being the dog than in a clinical setting face to face with a psychologist. Having said that, there are clearly many people who need to see a psychologist and I would encourage that. I have enormous um, respect for psychologists. However, if someone is perhaps languishing and they don't need to see a psychologist, they might find it beneficial to work with a coach. And that's where you would see a perhaps a teacher working with a coach for optimal functioning rather than a therapy dog because I don't think there are a lot of people who want to really be seen in public with a therapy dog and the therapist, but they would be seen with the coach. I want to bring this back because I know that we can get lost. All of us are MAP students. Uh, we love digging into theory and research and practice and all of these 
boring questions. <laughs> um, but I want to bring it back to, you know, two things actually that have sparked in relation to COVID specifically. First off, you know, that story that you had, Roz, around working up the courage to give your gift, right, in this time of crisis, I think is such an important message. Um, what it is, what is it that you can give? What is it that you can bring that can be a benefit? And then having the courage to go and do that um, is just such a useful, you know, we're, we're looking for tips and tricks for how to move forward positively, right? And it just, it is there. That's, that is what it looks like. Um, so thank you for bringing that out. The second thing was actually, you know, it's funny that you mentioned this, uh, but it comes back to a conversation that we were just having is what if <laughs> some of the interesting interdependencies around COVID, right? The fact that it's a disease and we as men don't like telling people that we're sick, whether it's mentally or physically, right? So there's this huge potential out there for men to mess it up for everyone by pretending, you know, we're okay when we're not. Um, so I think that's an interesting thing to bring up. Do you reckon um, dogs can help us with that? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, Sorry, go Simon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spot on, um, Kesh and um, Roz. I think um, anything we can do to help help the guys sort of uh, get themselves out there a bit more and, and talking and um, trying to improve is is a good thing. And yeah, I can definitely see um, see the sense in what you're saying there, Roz, with um, the dogs and being outdoors in nature and and um, a bit more of a talk rather than sort of therapy session working. Um, and just, just quickly before Grigsy cuts me off, um, I also wanted to um, just ask, um, Rosa, I've, I've had the fortune of participating um, a couple of times in sessions with you and your dogs and, and it's just fantastic and I recommend it to anyone. But for people, obviously you can't get around um, and see everyone across the world. Um, and in in these sort of times with um, people who might be struggling or stuck at home or uh, whatever it might be. Um, a lot of people have dogs. Is there anything um, you could suggest um, to get the most out of their relationship with their dogs um, in, in times like this, whether it's going for an extra walk every day yeah. or just going Absolutely. out the back of the plate? I'm glad you've raised that and I'm, and I'm happy to demonstrate very briefly, just a second. Come on, come on, boy. Okay, so this this is something that people can do with their dogs, and that dogs are very accessible to many people, either whether they own them or whether they um, belong to family or friends. And certainly, only if the dog is comfortable with this, and you'll know very quickly by looking at its body language whether the dog is comfortable or not. Okay, so there's a lot of benefit to be gained just through observation. Dogs are humorous, they're sweet, mostly. They're, I'm generalising here. They're very lovely. This is Rafa. He's very placid. He's got his zestful jacket on. Okay. Um, if the dog's small, or even if it's large, you could sit on the floor or sit on a couch. But it's really important, if you can, hold the dog close to your chest. Hold the dog close to your heart. This is called ventral to ventral or heart to heart. And by doing this and patting the dog for between, and I only do it if the dog's comfortable. If it's not your dog, it may not be comfortable doing this. However, if it is your dog, and particularly for children, this might be very soothing. So patting the dog for between, this is um, Melanie Jones' work from Lead the Way, patting the dog for between five and 24 minutes you're actually reducing your cortisol, you're reducing your heart rate, you're soothing yourself. And the act of having the dog on your lap is called sensory modulation. That's better than a weighted blanket because you've got warmth, you've got the heartbeat, you've got uh, interaction, and it's also increasing your oxytocin. And this is the oxytocin effect, which is quite magical and, and science-based, science evidence-based. We know that it creates um, psychological safety, and it's also producing that wonderful oxytocin hormone that is um, often we think about from parent to child. So it's also mutually beneficial. You can see that Rafa, he's enjoying it, he's peaceful, He's enjoying being with his mummy. So 
I am really heartened by the fact that so many people do have dogs or have access to dogs through friends and family, and there's a lot of potential well-being for people right now. Is there, Roz, in your, um, you know, in your journeys, you've come across more of this than I probably have. Um, anything around dealing with therapy dogs and boosting immunity because we know that there's an effect with well-being so people that are generally happier or have higher well-being tend to have greater um well greater immunity yeah um, and less prone to getting diseases and less prone to getting um yeah poor health and things like that okay there's some there's some research on dog ownership and um general um immunity good immunity i guess because the dogs you know they play in the dirt sometimes and, you know, they lick us and they, you know, and uh, there's not a lot of research. There's a lot of research on the benefits of canine assisted therapy. And it's often one on one, one dog, one child. I've worked a lot in group settings as well, whether it's a school refusing preppy, a um, disengaged um, traumatized teenager or a University of Melbourne student who's on a 99 ATAR. Uh, however, who might be experiencing home, homesickness or anxiety, social anxiety, or a prickly 80-year-old, not mentioning any names. <laughs> oh, Rose, that's, you, you know, you, you're, missing, you're making me miss um, my little dog back in Australia um, a, a lot right now. So um, if my dog is watching, uh, hi, Flappy. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and, and can I... Sorry, can I share a brief story with you? This might help people in, in coronavirus times to keep a sense of humour. Can I share a story with you? Of course. Yeah. Go ahead. It doesn't include the dog. Okay, so after Pilates yesterday, I rewarded myself with a delicious raspberry Danish, which I did savour. And so I was in a bit of a hurry and dashed into the city to pick up a wedding present and usually I would check myself in the mirror and check my bag and make sure I was well groomed before I ducked into the store but I was time poor and only could, could only find a half hour park and so I, I walked confidently into the store and the very well groomed salesman said and have you had a good morning I said oh yes I've walked the dogs and done Pilates had delicious raspberry Danish and then I caught myself in the mirror just after he'd gone off to find something and realised I had some raspberry Danish on my nose. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gold. And, and so, you know what, I just, I just wiped it off and played on, played on. And I just thought, you know what, if we can laugh at ourselves, we'll be endlessly entertaining. And I, I bet you, you um, put a spark in that guy's day as well, Roz. I think I did. I think I might have. Mm. Well, Roz, we're, um, we've reached our, our 20 minute um, timer. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with us or any final thoughts uh, before we let you go and uh, enjoy that interview with uh, Dr. Waters in 20 minutes time, I think? Yeah, great. Um, I, I found that the work we do with the canines, the biggest, the common denominator that it, it helps with is anxiety. And I think in coronavirus times or anxiety provoking times, and I really, have seen over and over the benefits of interacting with the dogs and a lot of people have access to dogs so i really encourage you to be you savor those beautiful interactions and really boost your well-being yeah great and thank you so much no thank you so much for giving up your time and and sharing those tips with us and um, i've heard you speak before but i still every time you you, you um I, I chat with you i learn something new um so thank you very much for sharing with us and um, I hope that the people will be able to um, take something from this um, to use in their in their day to day at home. Um, so thank you very much, Roz, and enjoy the rest of your day. Pleasure. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Roz. Thanks. Bye.